Backbite Broadcasting out the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel and thank you for allowing me into your space. If you like what I talk about, please click up the thumbs up or the thumbs down if you don't. You can share or you can subscribe. And yeah, for my existing subscribers, just thank you for your support. For those who know me, I talk about a lot of different subjects. And today I'm talking about the um, situation with Spain. Uh, apparently, Spain is threatening to deport the, the British nationals who are living in Spain if they cannot get a guarantee that the over 185,000 Spanish nationals living in the UK are protected post-Brexit. So we've got this big situation where, you know, this is going on. And a lot of people in, living in Spain were worried about this and they were given guarantees. But there is no guarantees. If you think about what's happened to the EU nationals, yeah, there's supposed to be this EU settlement deal, but how many people are getting through? How many people have got the paperwork? It's just like the Windrush. If you haven't got the paperwork, you don't qualify and you're in limbo. So it's the same situation. Not everyone is going to have paperwork and it's going to be the same with the Spanish nationals. I bet you. But anyway, um, I'm just going to, and what it made me think about is that, you know, sometimes I think about the UK and I'm thinking about all the people they're deporting, you know, and then I think about USA. We don't hear so much now. Maybe it's because I haven't really been following it up, but we know that they're deporting in numbers. And then, you know, you kind of think who else is deporting who and to where. So I thought I would just do a little um, roundup of who's deporting who. It might be of interest to you, it may not, but I thought I would do it anyway, just because I was curious more than anything else, because sometimes, you know, I guess we can kind of, when it's taken out of context, we can kind of feel as though one country is more biased than the other when you hear about deportations, but when you hear about it going on around the world, it kind of puts it into context. So, uh, Britain expatriates living in Spain are being threatened with deportation post-Brexit if the Spanish government of the United Kingdom fails to prove that the Spanish migrants are safe from Brexit effects. The Spanish government recently passed regulations to safeguard the rights of the 365,967 British nationals who are living in Spain. Approximately 185,100 British sorry, Spanish nationals, live in the United Kingdom. So there will be a tit-for-tat situation if UK plans to treat the Spaniards the same way they've been treating EU citizens, trying to secure settlement in the UK. In the UK. And we know that many EU nationals have been having hell trying to get their settlement status. Well, whether it's because they haven't got the right documents, they haven't completed the forms properly, but they are having the same problem at getting all the paperwork together that the Windrush um, generation was experiencing. So it's, it's not just one set of people. If you haven't got your documentation, you're up, you're up the creek without a paddle. And what the Spanish are saying is that, look, if you cannot guarantee the 185,000 plus Spanish nationals in the UK, that they are going to be safe, legally secure in the UK. We cannot guarantee that your 385,000, how many more than that, are going to be safe in Spain. So you need that guarantee. We'll secure, we'll secure those 385,000 that we have plus, I think it's 385,967, we'll secure them, but you have to secure our 185,100 Spanish nationals in the UK. That is where we are now post-Brexit. Um, in the year March 2019, 24,333 individuals entered the detention estate in the UK. Not quite sure what they mean by detention estate. I don't know if it means that they went into detention. I don't know if it means they qualified for detention. I don't know if it means they went into detention and came out. I have no idea what detention estate means. But over the same period, 25,201 left the detention estate. So that doesn't mean they were deported. 
they actually left that detention, I guess, status, I'd like to think it means. They left that detention status, and I don't know if that was because they was in there wrongfully or what. It, it's not clear. I got this information from www.gov.uk, which is a credible website. Okay, and um, so if more came out of the detention centre that went in as of March 2019, that means I can't imagine how much more is in there. Um, there was 8,637 enforced returns from the UK in the year ending March 2009. So that tells you that the detention estate is not the same as deportation. It's two different categories. Um, so Germany has deported 17,000 in 2019. The vast majority of them were moved to EU countries following the Dublin regulation. Then we have Spain. Spain deported approximately 9,000 irregular migrants in 2019. We have Turkey. Uh, Turkey deported Syrians that Turkish officials forced them to sign, apparently. Um, they signed forms that they weren't allowed to read, and in some cases after beating them and threatening them, um, and they were transported them to Syria. But Turkey has vehemently denied that this is true. France, the number of deportations went up to 14% to 14,859 in 2017 and has risen to 20% in 2018. I couldn't get the 2019 figures. Sweden, highly skilled, highly skilled deportations include 571 people who were at some stage of the process with the Migration Agency. Of these, 29% report having their application denied due to an error by their employer. And a further 58% were still waiting on a decision. Most of these errors were administrative. So they're not, well, Sweden is not deporting illegal immigrants. Apparently, there's been a fault in the system and they've actually been deporting highly skilled um, immigrants who are, technically legal in the country, but because of some faux pas, they have been deported, 571 of them. Um, USA, 18,000 detained pending deportation. As of April 2019, the latest month for which data is available, the number of removals was tallied at 6,152. Not much different from the UK, is it? Hmm. UK was a bit more. UK was 8,000. Australia. Now, there's an interesting background with regard to Australia and their um, deportation. Apparently, Australian immigration law was developed in the context of white Australia policy. The early immigration laws were intended to preserve the homogeneity of Australia as white, Anglo-Saxon and a Christian nation. The realisation of the white Australia policy could not be maintained in the context of modern international trends. The changing population patterns within Australia and the realisation that the Aboriginal inhabitants of Australia would be recognised as having rights to their traditional lands led to the abandonment of the homogeneity and the adoption of a multiculturalism as the desired goal for the Australian nation. So they moved from all white and actually accepting immigrants. I wish um, America and England would learn from that. At once, I mean, I know there's bias everywhere and I know there's, there's Aborigines have a hard time, but at least they've openly declared that they need to have a multicultural system in place. At once, the whole of the immigration law was displaced and concepts such as equality and other values and standards in human rights law had to be introduced in the creation of the new body of rules. Australia's Minister for Immigration, David Coleman, has introduced legislation to allow the government to cancel the visas of people who have been convicted of a crime that carries a maximum sentence of at least two years, even if they never serve time in prison. 
So, um, it carries a sentence of at least two years, even if they never serve time in prison. So, not quite sure what that means. Anyway, they've approximately deported 1,000 people. That's Australia. Canada, um, CBSA in Canada confirmed it had set a target of 10,000 removals for 2018 to 2019 fiscal year. The agency has now confirmed it removed a total of 9,584 people last year. So just short of their target. Gambia, Roughly 38,500 Gambians left the country through irregular means between 2013 and 2017. Today, almost every family has ties abroad. A large number of citizens, mostly young men, sought asylum in Europe, but very few have been allowed to stay. A, a slight increase in Gambian deportations began in November 2018 after the EU and the government agreed on a good practice agreement for efficient return procedures. The incoming returns in February 2019, with one particular return flight from Germany refused, authorities in Banjui claimed they had not been well informed about it and initially refused entry. And it followed public demonstrations followed in March. Thing is, what they're doing is they're sending them back. They're not telling the government and the government is refusing them and sending them back. Um, allowing more deportation from the EU is perceived as betrayal by many migrants and their families. On the whole, the Gambia has little room to manoeuvre. It is highly dependent on the EU's goodwill and financial support for its reforms process. The Gambian government says that if Gambians had access to fair and practical migration pathways, this would lessen cases of irregular migrations, which continue to remain high. So, um, where am I going with that really? I guess it's just about whether or not, you know, what is happening. Why is it happening all over the world, more or less at the same time? Not the same amount of figures, but everybody's deporting people back. And not all of them are illegal, but for some reason, it's like, People have decided now is the time to send people back to where they came from. And that just seems to be a trend around the world. I mean, some of them are illegal, some of them are criminal, and I can understand why. I mean, why in Australia? But they weren't even deporting people. They just weren't accepting people. They're not accepting people who've got criminal for two years, who've got a criminal record that could be equivalent to a jail's time. They're not even accepting them. But they haven't really done that much deportation. So I don't know if they, I think they've got quite a strict entry um, protocol anyway. So I doubt very much if they'd have that many to deport. But it's just interesting, really, what's going on around the world. And that's all I really wanted to share with you. Bye-bye.